It's okay? Yeah, okay, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this TED talk uh, entitled What Happened When All Teachers and Students Learn Computer Science. And this is going to be an amazing uh, <laughs> talk uh, by uh, Pat Young Pratit. Is it okay? Yep. Uh, no? Oh, so, good afternoon. And uh, let me uh, introduce uh, uh, Pat uh, shortly uh, by uh, describing his bio. I allow me to just sit here. So, so Pat Young Grabit is it correct? Okay, yep. is the chief academic officer for Code Organization, an organization dedicated to promoting computer science education. He advises partners with states and national education systems around the world. Notably, he has led the development of K-12 computer science framework and the annual state of computer science report. As a teacher, he inspired students to create games for social causes and implemented initiatives to increase diversity. He's a Microsoft Worldwide Innovative, Innovative Educator, was featured in the book American Teacher, Heroes in the Classroom, and is certified in biology, physics, mathematics, health, and technology education. So, floor Thank is you. over to you. But Thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Buenos tardes. Uh, if we can get the slides up. Oh. Okay. So the title of this talk is What Happens When All Students and Teachers Learn Computer Science. Code.org is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to bringing computer science to every school so that every student can learn it. And again, my name is Pat Jan Pradit. I'm the Chief Academic Officer for Code.org. I'm going to actually start with a video, and this video is in Spanish with some subtitles. Wonderful. That is a video that uh, we prepared for our Spanish-speaking audiences. So Code.org is a nonprofit organization that's US-based, but with international influence. And in fact, we have a special video that we're going to be debuting today, later on in this presentation, uh, that features the king and queen of Spain. But I'll get to that later. Our vision at Code.org is that every student in every school has the opportunity to learn computer science. That's around the world, from primary all the way to higher education. And I want to tell you a little bit about why I do this and why I've dedicated my career to this. This is a screenshot from LinkedIn. And uh, I think about maybe four or five years ago, a former student of mine, his name is Neiman Hayes. Neiman is the gentleman right in the middle. 
Uh, Neiman Hayes connected with me on LinkedIn, and I always, I always loved having former students connect with me on LinkedIn so that I could see what they were up to. And Neiman connected with me, and I told, I told him how proud I was of his, uh, his, of his career and what he's done with his life. You see, Neiman uh, had issues in school. He, uh, was often, he, he was often absent, and I came to find out that he actually had to take care of his little sister often, and that's why he couldn't make it, uh, make it to school on time. But he always came on time to computer science class. Now, partly that was because computer science class was at the end of the day, but partly it was also because he just enjoyed computer science. And so Neiman in this screenshot tells me that he wouldn't have gone as far as he did without the opportunity to learn computer science. So this is the number one reason why I promote computer science, because it can change students' lives. So my presentation is all about what happens when students and teachers learn computer science. So let's talk about that. And I want to talk about Maria. So Maria, at eight years old, if she learns computer science, she would learn to treat computers not as an entertainment tool. You know, a lot of students these days, they see a computer and they think, fun, exciting, they just want to go to the internet, play video games, etc. But Maria, even at eight years old, treats computers as a creative tool. She already knows that this tool is not just for fun or just to receive fun, it's to make fun as well. And so Maria, instead of playing games, she creates games and she creates animations just like these, and she creates stories at eight years old. So what happens if Maria learns computer science at 13 years old? Well, Maria learns to create programs for a variety of her interests. So it's not just school projects that she creates uh, computer programs for. She even learns how to, like I said before, create video games, but in this case, she's using math to create video games. And this is actually a very uh, typical situation in video games. You have to figure out whether two things are touching one another. Well, to figure out whether two things are touching one another, you have to use geometry and understand the coordinate plane, uh, understand a little bit of algebra as well. And so Maria learns about these topics as she's learning computer science. And in fact, studies show that as she's learning computer science, she learns skills with metacognition. Uh, she learns how to uh, perform better in math and science. She learns problem-solving skills, critical thinking, um, and even spatial skills like this. At 18 years old, Maria addresses the issues that are important to her community. So again, she's going beyond school, and she's thinking about what's important to her community. And as we know with the pandemic, um, Students have had a hard time during these last two years. In fact, all of us have had a hard time, but the students for sure have had a very hard time. And that's why it's very important to um, uh, help them understand, help, help, you know, to teach social emotional learning, basically. And so you can actually combine computer science with social emotional learning, and Maria decided to do that. She decided, you know what, how do I help my fellow students? How do I help them feel better about themselves? So she created an app. Now, all, this whole story about Maria is, you know, Maria is not a real person. This is about a, a vision uh, that happens when students learn computer science. But this app is a real app that a student created. And this app is called the Giving Tree app. In fact, on any internet browser, on your phone, you could actually bring this up right now. That is the short link for it. But the Giving Tree app has you type in uh, a positive comment about yourself every day. And so you type it into that text field, you press the plus sign, and it adds to this tree, and the tree grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you can always see your growth journal by pressing the growth journal button. And so in this case, <laughs> you know, so actually this, this is my growth journal. Uh, <laughs> um, I love my kids, I did the dishes, I ran five miles, you know, so, you can review this and help yourself feel better. And so this is the power of computer science when every student learns computer science. They 
don't see it as an entertainment tool. They're able to create with it. They're able to do better in math and science. They're able to learn metacognition uh, and problem-solving skills, and they're better able to create apps that really mean something to them and their community. And so at 22 years old, Maria graduates. Good for her. And Maria actually graduated with a, a degree in computer science, a minor in computer science. And she gets a job as a programmer? That's what you would think, right? And in fact, there are lots of jobs for programmers out there, not just in the high-tech uh, industries, but in all fields as well. But you know what? Maria does not decide to become a programmer. Maria decides to be a fashion designer because she also, she also majored in the arts, in, in graphic design, in fact. And Maria becomes a fashion designer, but she uses her computer science skills to innovate in that field. And that is the main, main reason why we want all students to learn computer science, because they can have this superpower and use it and apply it to whatever they want, to whatever field, whether it's medical or zoology, archaeology, biology, etc. They can use this superpower and apply it to it. And so here, this is actually a, another real situation. Uh, her name is Maddie Maxey. You can look her up. M-A-D-D-Y, M-A-X-E-Y. She's the lady on the far left. Maddie created a dress that lights up when you move. And so she used her computer science skills, her technical skills, to innovate fashion design. And this is actually um, a Zach Posen dress. Zach Posen is a very famous fashion designer. So now the question is, how do you achieve this vision? How do you get more Marias around the world? So you have to start by creating courses for students and teachers, from primary school all the way to secondary school, teaching them how to have fun with code using blocks, just like Lego blocks, but then transitioning them to typical programming languages, like JavaScript and then helping them learn how to work with actual hardware and create games with that. So you have to create courses that are fun and exciting for students and teachers from primary school to secondary school, including higher education. And in fact, a number of us here are from higher education, and we have to ask ourselves, how relevant is the introductory computer science class at our higher ed, at our higher ed institutions? Is it relevant to students in this day and age, or is it relevant to students 20 years ago? And so that's why Code.org has decided to revolutionize curriculum for K-12 by creating tools and resources such as these, and this is all actually free at the website code.org, C-O-D-E dot O-R-G. And it's hugely popular. 72 million students around the world are on Code.org. 27 million of those students are actually outside of the U.S. And what I'm really proud of is that 44% of those students are female. 50% of those students in the US are from underrepresented groups. And 46% of those students are in schools of high need, meaning there are schools with high poverty rates. The second thing you need to do to achieve the vision of more Marias around the world is to prepare teachers. It's very simple. How do you get computer science taught? you have to prepare teachers. But here's the thing, most teachers in K through 12 never learned computer science as they grew up. So what do you have to do? You have to give them special workshops. And so when you do that, teachers get excited. Why do they get excited? Because their students are engaged. They are teaching little Marias. So this is Michael Clark, this is a real quote. Michael said, I decided to try code.org today in my eighth grade science classes. Not a computer science class, but a science class. And I have to say, I've never ever seen my students so engaged and excited about learning as I saw them today. You know, I actually taught eighth grade science myself. And I remember the way I taught eighth grade science was primarily from a book. And yes, I threw in some science experiments from time to time. But with computer science, you're away from a book, you're on a computer, and you're making things the entire time. So it's no surprise that students are engaged in computer science. Every teacher should learn computer science. And here are just some pictures from Code.org's professional learning workshops. 
teachers love the power of coding, partly because they're having fun, also because they see the, the opportunity it might provide their students. The third thing you need to do to achieve the vision of More Maria's is to promote policy. And here are actually some pictures of engagements we've had with prime ministers all around the world. The, the picture on the bottom left is actually the prime minister of Thailand. I happen to be Thai, so I'm very proud of that. And so I have some recommendations for higher education. So we're talking about policy, right? And again, we're at a world higher education uh, convening. So I have some direct policy recommendations for anyone influencing higher education, starting with number one. Require computer science as part of a general education requirement for your institution. So, you know, we require English or language, we require math, we re maybe we require science, but this requirement for computer science needs to extend beyond just the, the, the technical, the technology majors, or even beyond the STEM majors. And if, by the way, your institution doesn't require computer science for all STEM majors, you're already behind because computer science is innovating every single STEM major, computational biology, engineering, et cetera. Where would engineering be without the power of not just the computer, but of programming? Even mathematics is basically data science these days, using languages like R. So require CS as part of general requirements, even for arts majors, even for uh, literature majors, philosophy majors require computer science. Number two, allow computer science to count for university admissions. So even, uh, even getting into university, you should be re requiring computer science or at least allowing it to count and not just uh, viewing it as just a, another elective. Number three, incorporate computer science into all STEM programs. That kind of goes with the first one, but again, I said, if, you, if you're not at least doing number three, you're already behind. Number four, require all education students to learn computer science. That means every single teacher graduating through your institution should learn computer science. Right now, every single teacher usually has some type of technology class, education technology class. When I was a teacher and I got my degree, uh, we learned how to do PowerPoint, okay? That was very important. Um, even before that, probably teachers learned how to type, you know? Well, in this day and age, we're beyond typing, we're beyond PowerPoint, we're beyond using the internet. Teachers really need to learn how to code. And the best way to do it is in their education programs so that they can integrate it in their teaching when they graduate. Lastly, number five, uh, higher, ed higher education institutions can promote computer science for all students and examine demographic representation in their CS programs. Right now, there are computer science programs all over the world, and if you walk into a classroom just like this for a computer science class, you'll look around and see a bunch of boys, or you'll see a bunch of guys like me. And um, that's just not right. And what it's gonna take is higher ed institutions to really examine the representation in these programs and try to figure out what is going on. Why is this the case? So at least, if you're not doing one through four, do number five. Lastly, there is a, uh, a group in uh, Europe called Informatics for All, and they're led by um, a good friend of Co.org's. His name is Enrico Nardelli. He's, at, uh, he's in Italy, and uh, he leads this effort to really bring, bring computer science to all higher ed institutions. It's a higher ed initiative. So uh, I suggest you visit it, informaticsforall.org. Lastly, and you saw the video at the beginning, you have to inspire the world to get more Maria's. You have to change people's hearts and their minds and help them understand that computer science really is for everyone. And we do this primarily through events like the Hour of Code. Did you know that the Hour of Code, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, maybe you've never heard of it before, but the Hour of Code actually happens to be the world's largest educational event. It is. Last year, it's, so it's, in its, it's going into its 10th year uh, this December, but last year there were 
86,000 events registered all around the world in 180 plus countries, and over 100 million students participated. And the hour of code, what it is, is it just asks uh, during one week, and this could be uh, uh, Africa Code Week, EU Code Week, or Computer Science Education Week in the US, but during that one week, take, uh, learn, do one hour of coding. And so there's a website where students can create uh, fun, exciting things like this. And so there's um, a, uh, a tutorial called Dance Party. And a Dance Party basically has you code or uh, a dance um, and to uh, fun music. And that's an example of the, the code that goes behind it. And so here's a picture of students actually dancing along with uh, their code. And we're actually going to be doing this later on at 6 o'clock over in the other uh, location. So if you want to do this and learn how to do this with students, you can come and join us. Uh, there's also uh, tutorials like AI for Oceans, where students learn about machine learning and artificial intelligence, and they connect it to cleaning up the ocean. And so in this tutorial, students learn to train an artificial intelligence to recognize the difference between fish and trash, and then deploy that AI to actually scan the ocean. And during that time, students understand what, what's happening with the oceans and, and pollution, et cetera. So an hour of code has, done, has, has um, been done all around the world with kids, but also with uh, prime ministers. Um, and I want to show you a video of our founder, Hadi Partovi, doing an hour of code with the king and queen of Spain in, in, in cooperation uh, with our partners at the foundation um, for the princess of uh, Girona. So I'm going to go ahead and play this uh, video. So that video is just another example of what it takes to change hearts and minds. So not just events like the Hour of Code, but producing videos to show people the power of coding and how people are having fun and just making it more popular. So I want to end by talking about how Code.org is here to help. So Code.org is not just an organization that creates videos and does events and, and even creates tools and trains teachers. We also consult with higher ed institutions, ministries of education, uh, governments, to make sure that uh, everyone has the opportunity to learn computer science. And that's partly why I'm here. So after this, if you have a, a question about how do you include computer science in your education system, please feel free to talk to me. You can also email me at pat at co.org. Um, I don't know if you saw my last name before. It was Pat Yong Pradit. This is the easiest email I've ever had. So it's just pat at code.org. And again, we're here to help. So again, if you want more Marias, more students who uh, don't see a computer just as an entertainment tool or a place to play video games, but instead they see the computer as a place to create technologies and create video games or apps or simulations, if you want more Marias, then what you need to do is you need to change hearts and minds. You need to create courses for students and teachers. You need to train the teachers. You need to promote policy. And basically, 
You have to give students the power to be a creator in this world, and not just a consumer of all these digital things. We're coming out of the pandemic now, and we need to realize that this is a wonderful opportunity. A lot of people right now are focused on learning loss and how do we make up for the last two years. I want to challenge all of us to think not how do we catch up or how do we get the two years back, but how do we move forward? What are we teaching anyway? Is it relevant? Is it important? From the pandemic, we saw how powerful computing is. I mean, think about your smartphones. Where would you be without your smartphone, really, right? Where would you be without your smartphone? You know, the iPhone only came out in 2007, so it really wasn't that long ago. And it's transformed our lives. Computing kept us connected during the pandemic. And now here we are back in person again. Are we going to go back to the same old, same old? You know, maybe we're going to continue video conferencing, but you know what? That's it. Or are we going to really re examine like, what we're doing here? Are we teaching the right stuff? Are we teaching in the right way? Are students having fun? Why, why is it that students were disengaged from school during the pandemic? Like, maybe it was because we were just trying to do the same thing, but now just through video. So, my name is Pat,、uh, Pat Yon Pradit. I'm the Chief Academic Officer for Code.org. I'm here to help. That's my email. And we have just a couple minutes for potentially some questions. Thank you. Yes. That sounds great. So, we, we have, actually have 130 plus international partners all around the world. And so, depending where you are, we can connect you with one of our partners or we can just work with you directly. So, just again, please email me at padatco.org. So, it's at Gallaudet University and、oh. the Clare Center is located in Washington. And、DC. I happen and to be in, in Silver、touch. Spring, Maryland. So, you know, just, just call me over and I'll, and I'll visit. Yeah. Any other questions before we conclude? Okay. Well, thank you. That's my email. And I believe we're going to have another speaker starting in two minutes. Thank you.